Round 493 to the nearest hundred. The truth is, if we if we understand rounding just even a little bit, we understand that you only have two options with this. You have either 500 or you have 400. And uh, 493 is only seven away from 500. Uh, we don't have to worry about that being that specific, but it's a lot further away from, uh, it's a lot further away from 400. So yeah, our answer here would be 500, rounded to the nearest 100. If we go through our rules on this, we'd say, well, we're looking at the hundreds place value, which is where the four is, and immediately to the right is a nine, which is five or more. So we add one to the four, and that gives us the five. Five hundreds. Adding whole numbers, this is what we're trying to get to. Uh, we do want to get memorization down with the first 10 addition facts, because this section is on adding whole numbers. And then can we add whole numbers with many different methods? So on the, on the assignment, there are lots of methods. I would recommend pretty much finding the one that you like the most and stick to that, okay? Um, sometimes they're not as practical, depending on what you're doing. We'll talk about that too. But then also we'll do some rounding with the addition and then identifying properties of addition as well, okay? So that's what we're looking to cover in this section. Addition is great. Um, really, addition is just kind of a simplified form of counting because like the example showing right here, like if, if I have two cows and you got three cows, then we would say, well, how many cows do we have if we combine all of our cows? Then you, would, you could count, right? You could just say, well, let's put them all in a field and then count them all together. Uh, but if we know how to add, which is taking two or more values and then just combining them, like we would with the cows, not like we're getting five-headed cows here, but um, you can have two cows and three cows, and we just know that that's five. So we see more of the math hieroglyphics happening, the symbols, right? Two, three, and five, and uh, this isn't going to go away for us either. But today, we also have a new symbol, which I don't think we saw last time. It's this one right here. That's the addition symbol, which we saw on the last slide, but... Um, I don't think we saw that in the last lessons. There it is, the addition symbol. And the great news for us is that there is no other symbol for addition because um, there are other symbols that we use for other operations. But addition and subtraction only have one symbol that I can think of. So I, I don't think I'm wrong there, but I could be. <laughs> I'm just not remembering right now. Sometimes, and I don't think we have a slide on this today, but sometimes math is really just taking stuff that we know already and just kind of formalizing it, or we take something that we know exists and then we make it be what we want to be. Because for example, here, and this is, this may be a slight tangent, so forgive me, but let's say that, uh, let's say that we started with eight cows, okay? Uh, well, let's say, that, let's say that I have eight cows even, okay? Well, if I have eight cows, but let's say that I want to split them up, Okay, so let's say that I wanted, let's say I wanted uh, four cows, and then we'd say, well, how many cows do you, do you get? Well, if we have eight cows total, then you would have to get four cows as well. See what I'm saying? Now, do I, does it have to be four plus four? It doesn't. I could, make, I could change it to something else. I could say, well, what if I wanted five cows, and then how many cows would you get? You'd get three. See what I'm saying? Does it matter? Well, it depends. It depends. The, the, the idea here that I want you to get used to is that you can change the way the math looks without changing the value. And that's what I just did there at the bottom. Uh, because if you can learn that, there's, there's technically no math you cannot do. But you have to understand you can change it because in the past, math has taken control of lives and it tends to destroy them, which is quite unfortunate because there's been lots of lives destroyed by math. And I think we covered this just a little bit last time, is adding with fingers. Okay, so please do not feel ashamed if you need to add with your fingers because I still do it, okay? Uh, and the truth is you can add even very, very, very large numbers with your fingers. It, it does take some clerical work, meaning you have to actually write stuff down as you go. But if you want to use your fingers, don't feel free. Be, be very open about that. Just pull the fingers out and just start putting them up or down or whatever you're going to do with them. So... Um, yeah, so when you see, when you use your fingers 
Uh, you see how many of you're adding while counting up one for each finger. So let's, oh, we need some numbers. Okay, let's have some numbers. We need two. All right, so we got seven and three here, and let's add using our fingers. So here's what I would do. There's a couple different ways to do this. Some students would put seven fingers up, and then we would count three. But I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to say I'm going to count. I'm going to start with seven, and um, this is a math hand right there, which I'm actually quite proud of. I've done much worse. So uh, I would say I'm going to start with seven. So I say, okay, I'm going to start with seven. And then for every finger I put up, that's one more, right? But I've got to get, I've got to get up to three more fingers up. So whichever hand this is for you, and I don't know which hand it is for me either, but there's another finger, so that, that'd be seven, that's eight, and then nine. See, there's two fingers, and then a third finger would make ten. See what I'm saying? So the final answer here would be ten. So sometimes you count more, sometimes you need lots of fingers, sometimes you need only a few, like we just did. But in reality... Uh, again, when we're counting, I don't know, technically you only need, you only need both hands ever, okay? But you do have to be able to count up to, um, I suppose, 20, something like that, okay? So another way that students do it, they say, well, they, put, they actually put up seven fingers, then they'll put up three more fingers, and then you see you got 10. Now, what do you do if you have, like, seven plus eight? Well, then you don't have enough fingers, and then you got to start over. You usually put them down and then start them back. Whatever, you get to choose. Here's our first... Um, addition facts. It says for the first 10 values, some students say, well, it only goes to 9. That's, that's true, but we start at 0 for this one. So there's technically 10 for each of them. Um, we, we would really like you to memorize these, meaning try to find a place that you're going to see often and put these out there so that you can see them often and get these memorized as soon as possible. Now, the other thing you'll notice with these is that Technically, you don't have to memorize all of them because, for example, we can point out, I'm just going to pick one out randomly, 2 plus 8 is 10. 10 is a nice number. It works pretty good, right? Uh, but we also see the same exact math fact over here. It's 8 plus 2 is 10. Now, are they the same? They are because they equal the same thing. Again, does it, does it matter then if you do 2 plus 8 or 8 plus 2? It doesn't. I suppose it may, depending on the situation that you're in. But the other thing that hopefully you'll notice with these is that they create patterns. I saw one diagonally. I'm looking at the, the totals. These are called sums, like 11, 11, 11. See what I'm saying right there? So we can see these patterns. You can see them going down right there as well. The totals, these ones are going up by one. If I go down a column, if I go to the right on a row, they're going up by ones. And uh, you could say going backwards or upwards as well. Uh, but again, these are math facts that we really, really want you to memorize as soon as possible because if you can, the math is going to go a lot faster and you'll be able to understand more as well. So are there reasons why these math facts exist? Yeah, of course there are, right? Like if you wanted to just point out one of these randomly again, like 5 plus 6 right here, you could count fingers. You could say five fingers up, six more fingers up would count up to 11. Or you could start with five and then count six more fingers and you still get 11, okay? So it's just counting some kind of quantity, some kind of value, something that you're counting. Um, I said cows before, but whatever. You could be counting whatever you wanted to count. So students in the past, when we have charts or tables like this, they're like, you know what, I'm going to put this close to the John so that I can see this. And it's like, okay, I don't really need to know that much. Uh, but a, pl a common place, well, not a common, but a place we never want you to put it is like, you know, where, when you're driving, put it on your windshield because then it may, it's not, not very safe. So don't do that. So we, we just pull these values out. If we have this memorized, we don't have to think about the finger thing. It's, I'm not saying you shouldn't or that you can't. But I am saying, if you, if you can think of this right away, again, the other stuff goes faster. So 8 plus 4, even right now, you can still use your fingers, but I would refer to this math fact right there, which is saying 8 plus 4 is 12. Like I'm saying, we, we end up doing this, if you can memorize this, it goes, things go pretty fast for us in math. Uh, and really, the tables relate to each other. 
So even if you're not, if you're, if you're in your mind like, you know what, I never plan to memorize this, Sal, that's fine. But do be aware that we're going to be doing it often enough where you just may end up memorizing it anyways. <laughs> so. And so we choose five. Write five as an addition of two whole numbers in two ways. Uh, okay. Does anyone see uh, uh, a pair that we can use to add up to me? Four plus one will work. And uh, we can find that right here in our chart, which we hope to memorize very soon. Does anyone see any, see any others? Seven, zero. Now, this is nice because there were actually, what is there, one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I see six, six options we could have chosen. And uh, all of these, if you were to put them together, would add up to five, right? Now, why is there, why is there, why am I saying that there's six when in reality, we would also say that one plus four is the same? It's because um, the chart is kind of showing them as different, okay? So even though they give us the same values and we're even using the same values to get there, that's okay. Since expanded form organizes the number by place values, we can combine or add place values together. And this is where, especially when we're looking at just two numbers together, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't even matter how big they are. We end up only adding up to pretty much 9 plus 9, which is why if you can memorize up that high, then as long as you're adding two numbers at a time, you can do it, and you can do it fairly quickly and efficiently, okay? Uh, but we're doing this by place values, so, okay, so there's our place values. Sorry, that's kind of small. Uh, but we want to organize our numbers by place values, just kind of stack them. Uh, because if we can add these by place value, it, it, that pretty much is our expanded form. Okay, so just to just to remind us, um, let's let's get us a number. We can stick with that. So seven, three, and five. If we were to write this in expanded form, we separate it by their place values, right? So we would say starting with the biggest place value, which is the hundreds. There's seven hundreds, and then the tens. There's three of the tens. That would be thirty, and then five of the ones would just be a regular five. And then from what we saw last time, we're adding these together. Now, if I add another number to it, then I need to align these by their place values when, uh, when we expand them, okay? And this is going to help us when we get into the real stacked addition. So, yeah, we, we can wing it. No problem. We can, add, <laughs> we can add as big as numbers as we want, right? Now, it says add with expanded form, so we're going to change these into their expanded form. And I'm going to look at, I, I start with the first one on the left, technically with addition, it doesn't matter which one you start with. Um, some students would say, or, or even teachers would say, you start with the biggest one. Uh, no, I go from left to right, and that's on purpose, because that's going to come back and haunt us if we start going, doing everything from right to left. But uh, in any case, let's write this out. So I've got uh, three in my thousands place value, that'd be 3,000. I've got six in my hundreds place value, that'd be 600. I've got seven tens, that's 70, and then I've got one individual one right there. So for expanded form, we would show this with addition. And that looks pretty, right? Looks pretty good. Now we're adding to this 4,825. So in my thousands place value, I've got four of them, so that'd be four thousands. There's eight of the hundreds, that'd be 800. There's two of the tens, which would be 20, and then five of the ones. And again, this is all addition. So this is preparing us again for stacked addition. We just don't, in stacked addition, we don't actually show these by uh, with all the zeros, okay? But what we're gonna do next is now I'm going to add these by their stacked place values, okay? So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start uh, on, the, on the right because that's usually where you start with addition, okay? We're gonna start with the lowest place value. Do we have to? Not necessarily. Not if we do it with expanded form like this, but I'm going to start on the right to help us to get on the right track for what's, for what's coming. So right here, I'd say 1 plus 5. Now, again, if you need to use fingers, please do it. But if you have this memorized, you'd just be like, oh, that's 6 right there. That's pretty good, right? Uh, and that's how many ones we have. Okay, 6 ones. We can deal with that. Tens. Here I've got 7 tens and 2 tens. Now, notice this right here. I don't need to count up by 20 fingers. I need to count by two tens. Because I'm dealing with tens, I can pretty much put the zero there, and then I just do seven plus two, which is nine. 
Well, if you're okay with that then, then 70 plus 20 was 90. What's 600 plus 800? There it is. 14, and again, we're in the hundreds, so we just make it 14 hundreds. You can read that as 1,400 as well. That's perfect. Okay, and now we got the thousands. I got three thousands and then four thousands. How many thousands total would that be? Seven. So again, yeah, we don't, you're walking to count 4,000 fingers more <laughs> or 3,000 if you want. I'm not going to do it. Okay, well, this would be its ex expanded form of the number we want. The problem is right here, you see what happened with the hundreds? Right there, we have so many hundreds that there's actually this, trying to highlight this, this extra thousand right there. Um, it's, it's so many that I can actually take that thousand right there and then put it over here into this thousands expanded form right there too, right? Which actually means, so let's look at this a little different. This one, uh, that one was converted into a thousand. Now I have 7,000 plus an extra thousand, that would be 8,000. Okay, now the, the four, the 1,400 is left with just 400. And then we have the 90 and the six, which when we add these together, now it's, it's considered more simplified. Now does that make it easier to put back into a regular standard form number? I don't know. And I'm not even saying that we have to, but I'm going to because I feel like I'm on a roll right now. Yep. 8,496, 8, 4, 9, 6. That's it. All right. Uh, if you don't have this memorized, whatever, you know, you just add, add with some tens. Here's how I would look at this. And technically, I think the homework kind of accepts. It has a lot of different answers that it will accept on this. But for me, here's what I would do is I would look at my, I would look at 34 here plus 90. And I'm not really going to touch the 90, even though you can if you wanted to. Uh, and for me, this would be easier if I can get to some kind of form of 10 or 100. And the 90 is already in its 10s, but 100 would be pretty easy to make from the 34, right? So here's what I would do is I would take 34. Remember how I said that math sometimes is just what we want it to be and not what it wants us to do? So right here, so... Uh, right here, what I'm saying is, instead of 34, I'm going to have it to be uh, 24 and 10, okay? Because I can. If I wanted to do that, then I can. And then, if I go back and add the 90 right here, I have these two values, which when I combine, 10 plus 90, I get 100. And then you still have a 24 right there. And then we could see, well, that's just going to combine to give us 124. Now, I say that like it's obvious. It may not be obvious for everyone. Again, I'm just trying to point out this, this is kind of what the homework is trying to get to. I believe it really just wants this part of the answer. Well, adding with values of 10 or higher. Uh, so this is where we start stacking, but we're not going to start separating them into their place values. Like uh, I'm not going to write this as 2,640 and then 7 separately. We just write it as one individual number lined up with the other number that's being added, in this case 531, by place value. So one in the ones, one in the ones seven in the ones. They're stacked so that, it, so that I can add them. Same with the tens. Four tens, three tens, four tens, three tens. Uh, and if we can look at it like that, just like we did with the um, expanded form stuff, then we can see, even if we need to carry value, values over, which does happen, um, it, it makes the addition easier. But again, let's go back even further in this lesson. Do you need to memorize something like 17 pl plus 52? No, because or you don't have to memorize even this, 2,647 plus, five plus uh, 531. All you've got to do is memorize up to 9 plus 9 because here's 7 plus 1, 4 plus 3, 6 plus 5, and then just a regular 2 right there. Okay, so you don't have to memorize everything, just up to 9 plus 9. And again, sometimes you'll just notice the patterns and it'll become easier for you. So when we add by place values, which is this, we're stacking. I call it stacked addition or adding by place values. I guess I switch because I'm a math nerd. But we go from right to left, and that is because of the uh, carrying over. Okay? So, uh, for example, and there's, there's one on this. Like, if you get to the 6 plus the 5 there in the hundreds, you'd, you'd end up with the 11 hundreds. But the 1 in the thousands place value right there, we carry it over into the thousands. 
which is why we go from right to left, because if you start on the left here, you'd get the two, then you'd have the 11, like what the crap did you do there? All right, it, it just gets everything kind of cluttered and messy, which sometimes I get cluttered and messy anyways. Okay, so these are the numbers we're adding. Let's go ahead and stack them. Now here's what I do just to start us out, because uh, again, I want to color code this. I'll do the 3,548 in red, 3,548. And uh, that's not bad handwriting for me. Some students say there's too much space between the numbers. Not for me. I like the extra space because it helps me to work. It gives me some space to work. So if that helps you, I would recommend doing it. All right. And then we're going to add the 5,026. 5,000. No hundreds. 26. And we're going to add these together like this. In fact, what I'm going to do, since I'm focusing on one individual place value at a time, and we didn't write this in expanded form, which maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just cover up all this other garbage. Okay, I just want to focus on one place value at a time, and if we end up with more than, than what we need, then we'll carry it over. All right. So for example, 8 plus 6, so we can use fingers on this. I'm holding my iPad, but let's see how, how we do. Okay, so 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, got to start over, 14, right? I almost lost track. Now, you could say it's 14, and that would be true. But we have so many ones that we have a 10 now. So I'm going to take that one 10, and I'm going to carry it over into the tens place value. So I have written 14. I've just written it kind of jacked up, right? Here's my one 10, and there's my four ones, 14, right? And now... I didn't line up very well, but I did my best. Uh, now I've got three numbers to add, but they're not numbers so large that I still can't use my fingers, right? And an another thing we can do, if you wanted to, you could put a plus sign right there. And some students, you know, are like, you know what, I don't even want to look at the eight and the six anymore. That's fine, you don't have to. We're focused on one place value. So if it helps you to get more laser focused on one place value, just cover everything else up, all right? So one plus four is five. And my five fingers, and then uh, two more, five, six, seven. No carrying for this one. So that's four ones, seven tens total after we added the extra one from the, from the ones place value, right? So let's keep moving over. Right here, this would be five plus zero, which is five. So five fingers up, no more fingers up. So there's five. And then we'll keep scooting these over. Now this is... Um, that's our thousands place value, right? Three plus five, boom, eight. All right, so let's clear it. Let's clear all this garbage. There we go. Now we can see the full problem, and uh, looks pretty good. There we go. Now I, I will run through this fairly quick, just because of time purposes. But we're going to line these up by place value. That's plenty of space for me right here. So I'll, again, I'd start with the ones place value, so I can. I don't have to worry about the 10s there, but 4 plus 2 is just a regular 6. And then I would look at 2 plus 5. That's in the 10s. That would be 7, 76. That was maybe more colorful than you wanted, but either way. I'm going to do this kind of two ways. The second way, you don't have to pay attention to it at all. Okay, but the first way, we're going to do this just traditional. We'll start with our, this is 9,999. And then we're going to add to that 99. So again, nine tens, nine ones. I need to make sure that those are lined up. And then we're going to add those by place value. So what happens here, though, is that as we start to add, with our first place value, the ones, I got 9 plus 9, which is 18. So again, that gives me an extra 10 to put up here. Okay. So again, we move this over a little bit. Let's focus just on the tens place value. That's 1 plus 9, which would be 10, plus another 9, which is 19. So again, that's an extra 100, and then 9 tens, but our extra 100, we're going to put up here with the hundreds place value. Let's move this over. And now I've got 1 plus 9 in my hundreds place value, which is a regular 10, so that's 10. But again, the one extra 1,000 I'm going to bring over here with my other thousands. I did that technology didn't like that. There we go. 
that's off. That's off. Sorry about that. But that's uh, 1,000 plus an extra 9,000, which would have been an extra 10,000. So it's an extra. So we end up having an, a 10,000 place value on this. Uh, and there's another zero that looks like a six. I don't know if that made it better or worse. Uh, okay, so that's one way to do it, right? Traditional. Um, now, with values like this, it's possible, and I'm just throwing this out there. You know, throw the spaghetti against the wall. We'll find out what sticks. There's some, I, I'm not saying that right, but in any case, here's what I did. Is I did uh, 10,000. 10,000 plus 100, okay? So I did this, and I got 10,100. You say, well, that's not the answer, which you, are, you would be correct in saying that, right? So after that, what I did is I said, you know what, I just need to take two away. I know we haven't gone over subtraction, so I'm going to skip the work on this, but that would have given me 10,098 right there, okay? Really, all I do is take 100, then I count down by two, and then I get... Uh, 10,098. Why did I do that? It's because if I just tack one onto this number and one onto this, it's like adding two. And so at the end, I just need to remember to take that away. So remember what I'm saying. I'm pointing this out because I just need you to know math is sometimes better if you can, maybe better is not the right word. Maybe faster would be the right word. But math can be faster if you, if you notice these little things that you can tweak as long as you put it back where it came from, right? So I'm not saying one's better than the other. Both got the same answer, and they're both correct. That's all that really matters. But again, the last thing I'm gonna point out, let's get rid of this extra stuff. Um, remember, the highest, the highest addition fact that we have to remember is nine plus nine, which we saw here, and then even by carrying it over, yeah, we can, we can say 18 and then add an extra one with our fingers, but after that, it was just one plus nine as we went. So let's look at these ones. Let's see if we can find a pattern here. So I'm going to start in the top left there. That's 3 plus 4, and that would be 7. Right there. Uh, 13 plus 4. You can use your fingers on this one, but it, you'd get, uh, you can do it by place value as well. 3 plus 4 is 7. And then we got the extra 1 as well, right? Or 23 plus 4. We'd do 3 plus 4, which is 7. Then just bring down the 2. Or 33 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. And then we bring down the 3. Um, notice the pattern similar to the table before, right here, by tacking on an extra 10 from one problem to the next, it never changed the 3 plus 4 part of that. And if you can understand that, then you're well on your way to adding any two numbers that you could ever imagine, no matter how big or small, okay? Uh, because by tacking on more here, and yeah, we could, we could even tack values onto the, onto the 4 as well. We could say, well, 13 plus 54. Right? But 3 plus 4 is always going to be 7 no matter what. And that's going to be true also for this next one. 2 plus 7 is 9. So when we look at 12 plus 7, we would do 2 plus 7, which is 9, then tack the 1. Same with 22 plus 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. Tack on the 2. 32 plus 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. Tack on the 3. Okay? So the pattern here is that we need to see 2 plus 7 is always 9. 3 plus 4 is always 7 even if we start tacking on extra tens as we go. Okay, and this is kind of the beauty of our number system, adding by place values. I think, I, I like it, it's pretty good. Sometimes they're, they're going to say, you have to add with two or more numbers, and uh, that can be a pleasant experience, but stack and add by place value. So we may end with values bigger than 18, which I guess we saw already, right? When we had to carry over the one, and then it was nine plus nine, so we ended up with 19 instead. Uh, but depending on how many numbers they add, if you're going to take this first option, which is just to stack and add completely, which you can do, and you can still use your fingers, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you can do it. Okay, so again, maybe there's addition with more than 18, which we've kind of seen already, but we may get into like the 20s or 30s or something like that too. If you do two numbers at a time, then sometimes that's simpler for some students. So it just depends on you, okay? So here's two major options. These are, these are um, the most common options. Is there more? Yeah, there is, but they get, they get pretty weird. Okay, we're gonna add these by stacking, but well, we need some numbers to put in here. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just gonna completely stack these by place value. And when I'm stacking them, I start furthest to the left. That's 9,000 
852. And we got a 26. So two in the tens, six in the ones. And we got a four digit number again of 5,492. And again, I'm, I'm being careful to try to make sure everything looks fairly lined up. And then we finish off with a 400, 400s, 110, three ones. So now that I have this, I am ready for the addition. So we end up with some fairly large numbers. We created these. That's okay. No problem. Uh, but we still only look at one place value at a time, starting with the ones place value. Okay. So right here, I would stop at, start at the top and then work my way down. I'd say 2 plus 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now 8, 8 plus the green 2 there, 8, 9, 10. That's 10. And then 10 plus another 3, 10, 11, 12, 13. Boom. Okay, so I got 13 there. But again, I've, I've got a 10, an extra 10 that I'm going to carry over into the tens place value. So now that we've completed all the ones, let's look now at the tens. So I start at the top again. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 2, 6, 7, 8. And then 8 plus 9, 8 plus 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then an extra 1 would make that 18. Okay, so I have now a value in the hundreds. That was 18 tens. So there's uh, 18 right there, tens. And we already have the value in the ones. But that one in the hundreds now, I'm going to carry that over. Let's keep moving this. All right, we're, we're even missing one of the hundreds, right? Because that number was just two digits, the 26. So let's do it. One plus eight is nine. Uh, nine plus four, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 plus four, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we get 17 there. And that one is in the thousands place value, so I'm going to carry it over into the thousands. Let's see our thousands right there. And that's off center. Sorry about that. I couldn't see the numbers, but a one plus nine is ten plus another five. Boom, fifteen. And that uh, would read fifteen thousand seven hundred eighty-three. I think that was all our place values, right? Yeah, that's it. So adding two at a time, we've come up with these numbers means that we look at only two numbers at a time. And the first two that I would look at, again, I would start on the left with the 7,834 and then the 26. So are there other numbers? There are, but I'm not worried about those. I can do a better three than that most of the time. Uh, okay, so that's 7,834, and then I've got two tens and six ones. Just going to add these together. All right. So two at a time, I know there's more. In fact, uh, it, if you get confused on that stuff, you know, just cover it up. Okay, we'll come back to it, we'll still see. They're still there. I just don't wanna look at them right now, right? And it's kind of the same thing we do with the place value. So right here, I've got four plus six, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, just counting fingers there. So there's a 10. So there's going to be an extra one there. That gonna be enough, okay, that's good. Okay, so now my 10's place value. One plus three would be four plus another I already carried the one. Sorry about that. One, I see I almost, made, I almost made a mistake again. One plus three is four plus another two. Boom, six. Nothing to carry there, but we just have an eight in the hundreds place value. So there's an eight. And then looking further over into the thousands, again, just a regular seven. So it looks like just by adding those two numbers, we get 7,860. But that's just the two numbers, right? We still have more numbers. Oh, the next one is just plus a five. That's not too bad. So we got uh, 7,860, and we're going to add a 5 right there. Uh, this one's not too bad. So I'm, just for the sake of time, I'm going to skip the covering the numbers. But 0 plus 5 is 5, and then everything else just drops because there's nothing to add to those place values. And then finally, we got that last big one, 1,350, which we will add. Okay, now the lines that I'm putting here, just so you understand, this notation right here is just saying that we're doing two at a time. We did these first two, we got this sum, and then we added the next number, we got this sum, and then we added the next number, and this should be our final sum. 
So let's take a look then. Yeah, it's a, it's not, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> so let's let's cover up some values. Five plus zero, anything plus zero is itself. So there's a five. And then uh, over here, we'll, it's probably not gonna let me do it. So six plus five would be 11. So let's carry over another 100 there. Okay, so one plus eight is nine, plus an extra three would be 12. So I'll carry another one. One plus seven is eight, plus another one would be nine. I think that's it, yeah. Okay, so that completes the addition right there. Now, could you have just stacked the whole thing and added it? You could have. Again, which one's better? I don't know. You have to decide. Uh, but the main thing is, no matter which method you use, you just need to make sure you get the the same answer, right? So they're saying, what would you add to 53 to get to 100? Now, you could count, by the way. You can start at 53 and be like, okay, there's uh, uh, 54, 55, 56, 57. You could use your fingers and count all the way to 100. 53 is kind of far away from 100, and that's more work than I want to do. So what we do is we say, well, we can kind of write a statement because we're adding some number to 53, right? And we're going to say, take 53, add something, but it's got to equal 100. In fact, if we do this by stacking, maybe it even helps us. 53 plus something needs to equal 100, right? So just by, um, uh, by adding right here, and this is, I don't know, they say it's number sense, but it takes a lot of thinking sometimes for this. Depends on what the numbers are. But if I look at this, I'd say, uh, again, I'd start in the... Uh, I would pretty much start in the ones. And I'd say three plus what is zero? Well, I can't, I can't get to zero, but what I can get to, I'm gonna need some space here. But uh, what, what I, oh, maybe I do need that. What I can get to is 10, right? So if I were to make this a 10 right here, it would allow me to carry one of these over and that'd be fine. So really what I would be looking at is what do I add to three to get to 10? Seven, bam, that's it. Okay, now I've already carried that one over. So right there, I've got one plus five, which is six. But then I would have to think, well, what do I have to add to six to get to really what this is, is 10 now? Well, that would have to be a four. Okay, now again, you, you could say, well, you start at six, you gotta get to 10. So you'd say six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And if you use your fingers like I just did, you'd see four fingers up and you'd see four, four tens. And so 53 plus what is 100? It's 47. So to go back to the original question, what would you add to 53 to get to 100? 47. I'm not a huge number line guy, but the homework likes them. Not just today's homework, but other ones as well. So here's what it, here's what it is. This is what it looks like down here. It doesn't have the words right there either. So it says you've got a starting value that says how far... You have to slide these on the computer on the assignment, okay? So um, it, I say you, you, the first number tells you where to start, and that's where you would take this, this one and you slide it to that number. We're not dealing with negatives. I'm, I know they're on there. Don't worry about that, okay? But you just start wherever it says, and then, then you put this dot over there. Now, as you move this over, this top one's going to move with it no matter where you go, and then this, the one on top... Once you, once you get it where you want it to go, then you stop, and then you take the top one and then move it over however far you need to, okay? Now, the reason why I'm not really saying um, that we're always going to write on this, to the right on this, because to the right makes numbers bigger, which is the addition direction, is because the same thing is going to apply with subtraction as well, okay? So it's, you start with your first value, you realize what direction you're going in, and then you go that far. Okay, so that's, that's how this is going to work. On this example, it says 1 plus, oh, we need a number. Okay, so here's what I would do. I'm going to take, I'm going to take my dots. The bottom one, I would, I would click on it and then move it over to 1 because that's my start starting value there, okay? So the first value tells me where to start. The addition here tells me to go to the right. And then the six tells me how far. 
So I'm going to go to the right, 6, from that, from that dot right there. Now, on, on the assignment, I would have left that there. And uh, let's get rid of this garbage because it's already been moved. So at this point, I would take the top dot here. Let's see if I can do this right. It's not my best dot, but I, I'm going to take this and then slide it over 6, right? So that would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That would be 6. And then uh, you would just slide this over. And on the assignment, by the way, they're going to show lines. They're going to say there's a line right there, and then this one is going to have a line. Don't worry about that. You're just sliding them over. But the truth is the final value is where we end. So we started at 1. We moved it over to the right 6. We end at 7. So 1 plus 6 is 7. Now, just like the fingers thing, right, by counting by fingers, which we can do, it's slightly impractical to use number lines all the time because how would we do 2,154 plus 678? I don't know. Uh, you'd, you'd, have to, you'd have to slide this over really far, and I don't want to do that. So I don't want to make a bar that – I don't want to make a number line that big either. That would stink. Okay, last, last thing for this section, properties of addition. We got the commutative property. Hey, these should have been underlined. Does that look more fancy? I'll keep them, whatever. Uh, so the, the commutative property, kind of the main part of that word there is commute. Uh, and to commute means just to move, okay, which is why uh, we say that the order does not matter right here because we're, we probably will change the order. If you see the order change in an addition problem, the commutative, commutative property has been used. Now, there's reasons why you would use the commutative property. We just don't really care about them right now other than to notice that it has been used. So that's what that's what's going to do on the assignment. Also on the assignment, we will see the associative property, which is where the order will not change, even though order doesn't matter with addition. But what we do say is that you can add anywhere you want to to begin with. Okay, so if you have like four numbers being added together, you can add the two middle ones if you wanted to. You could add the two end ones if you wanted to. If that's where you wanted to start, and again, there's reasons for, for why you would want to do that. We just don't care about them right now. And then the identity property of zero. I really like this one because it just says anything plus zero is itself. It's like taking something and adding nothing to it. You end up what you started with. Okay. So I don't know why that makes me feel good as a math person, but it does. see this already in the chart. Uh, I'm not, I don't think we saw these ones yet, but right, four plus three, we would say is seven. Uh, now, I changed the order there, though, right? So the first one that I did, 4 plus 3, but now it's 3 plus 4. Do we get a different val a different answer there? No, we don't. Okay, because order does not matter with addition. You can add in any order you want, which we saw also with the table. So 2 plus 7, that's 9. Sorry, I said, that, I said 2 plus 7. I should have read that as 7 plus 2. The next one would be 2 plus 7, which is 9, okay? Uh, so this is true, not just with single-digit numbers, but with double digits and single-digit numbers like we see in the next part. 23 plus 4. Again, I'd do 3 plus 4, which is 7, and then tack the 2 on. Uh, but same with this next one. 4 plus 23, 4 plus 3 is 7, then tack on the 2. See, we get the same answer there. So the next one will work the same. 2 plus 7 is still 9, but then we tack the 2 on. Or 7 plus 22, 7 plus 2 is 9 still, but then we tack the 2 on. So order does not matter. This whole slide here is showing the commutative property. That's it. All right, so here's the numbers we chose. I'm going I'm to put these out, and then we can determine which property is being used for each. Okay, this, this looks pretty good to me. All right, now the top one. Does anyone, does anyone know what property that is? Okay, you don't have to. We're just practicing, right? But the, t the top one right here is a, whichever one you want, whenever you want to do so this one, the one at the top here, is associative because we're saying, look, you want to add these two? You can. But if you want to add these two first, you could as well. And why am I saying first, even though we haven't gone over this, this is an order of operation stuff with the parentheses, tells us that we have to do that first. So this one is associative. All right, I'm satisfied with that, even if it's wrong. <laughs> All right, so the next one, 6 plus 1 plus 8 equals 8 plus 6 plus 1. Here, the order has changed, or they have, here's the key word, commuted, 
from one position to another, right? Six was in the first position here. Now suddenly it's in the second position. Eight is in position three. Now it's in the first position. They've commuted. They've changed the order on this one. So this is the second one here is commutative. And then the last one, we see a zero involved with addition specifically, which means it's the identity property of addition. All right, so using the commutative property, this is one, one case where we would want to use the commutative property because it will help us to get to sums of some 10 value, meaning 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so forth, even if it gets us to like 100 or 110 or something like that. So uh, commutative or associative even, meaning that if I wanted to, let's commute first. So if I wanted to take this 28 and combine it with 32 first, I could do that. Now, I'm not going to go over the math strictly right now, but that would have given me 60 right there. So you see, uh, the reason why we can do that, again, is it, is it quicker? I don't know. Uh, but it makes some of this math easier because I know 8 plus 2 is 10. And again, maybe that comes with memorizing the chart as well. So 3 plus 2 is 5, but then the extra 10 makes this 60. See what I'm saying? Or, so that's commutative, meaning I, I pretty much took the 32 and moved it by the 28 or the 28 by the 32. It doesn't really matter. But if I wanted to associate these two together, I could do that as well. Okay. Now, again, I would say, why would I do that? Because I've got the 4 and the 6 right there, which would make an extra 10. For my 3 and 3, 6, and then an extra 10 would make that 70 right there. Okay, well, what do we do with that uh, 15? Well, then nothing. We don't do anything with it. So just adding 15 right there. And then plus the 70. Uh, but now, if I were to add the ones, I've got 0, 5, and 0. So that's just going to be a 5. And then um, for my 10s, I've got a 6, a 1, and then a 7. You know, I'll skip the math on that, but it'd be 14. So we end up with 145. Now, again, this one is convenient because of the numbers that were used. Is that always going to happen? No, it won't. Right, like if this was a 33, I wouldn't really have anything else <laughs> to combine it with. So this is, it's almost by chance that this happens, but thank goodness when they ask you to do it on the assignment, they'll make this work fairly uh, similar to this one, fairly similar. So adding with rounding, I, I like it, at least when it's front-end rounding, because it's, I don't know, to me it's convenient, because I don't really need to stack and add these. Now, I also said I don't really like estimating. I don't, I don't like it because it's not exact, and math is more exact than that. And there's no reason not to because we know how to do it. But it will at least make this, this addition easier because we can look at the first number, the 8,370. And then the 5,886. Now, again, I know right now we know how to, we know how to add these together. But if we round it, it's going to make this a little bit easier for us. So it says front end rounding, meaning that we're looking at rounding to the first number in both numbers. So, for example, we're going to round for the 8,370. I've got to round to the thousands. That's the 8. The 3 to the right is less than 5, which means that it rounds to 8,000 because it is closer to 8,000 than it is to 9,000. But we'll do the same thing with 5,886. We're rounding to the thousands place value just because it's the first number on the left, the furthest place value on the left. And then the 8 right there means that I've got to add 1 to the 5. So 5 plus 1 would make that 6,000. It's closer to 6,000. 6, Everything else on the right becomes a 0. And now we're ready to add these. So the rounding part makes this easy because even if I go right to left, 0 plus 0 is 0. Anything plus 0 is itself, including 0. So I've got three zeros there, 8 plus 6. I'll skip the counting just for the sake of time, but that'd be 14. So we end up with a final value of 14,000. Good. This is what we got. Uh, now we're going to round each of these to the nearest 100. That's what it says to do. So that's what we will do. That is the third place value from the right, meaning I'm looking at the 5, this other 5, and then the 4 right there. Okay? So even though we have... Uh, numbers in the thousands place value. I don't really care about that. Uh, we'll deal with it as we as we go along here. But I'm going to start with the 8,574. I'm rounding to the five in the hundreds place value. I've got to look to the right. In the tens place value is five or more, meaning that I've got to add one 
to my 500 to make 600. Now again, we'd make it 600. It did not affect the thousands, so it ends up being closer in terms of hundreds. It's closer to 8,600 than it would have been to 8,500. So that's that one. The next one, same idea. We're, we've got the five there, but immediately to the right is a three, meaning that the five is still going to be a five. Okay, now that's, that's closer to 500, but it's actually 6,500. And then our last value, the four, to its right is a two, that's less than five, so the four just remains a four. It's closer to 400 than it would have been to 500. So we're ready to add these together. I guess we probably should stack and add them. 8,600 plus 6,500 plus a good 400. And I, I apologize, I may go through this fairly quick, but uh, zero plus zero plus zero, zero, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Maybe I put too many. Six plus five is 11, plus another four is 15, so we'll carry the one. One plus eight is nine, plus six is another 15. So overall, we end up with this value, 15,500, because we rounded everything to the hundreds place value. Adding whole numbers section,